I'm painting and weathering a modern concrete bridge on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a recent video, I showed you how I kitbashed a modern interstate highway overpass using several Rick's Products 150-foot modern highway overpass kits. This overpass is going to represent Interstate Loop 820 on the north side of Fort Worth, where it goes through Saginaw, Texas, on my layout. Well, today I'm painting and weathering that overpass, and I'm going to show you exactly how I paint it to get the color that I need for that aged concrete, as well as weathering it and striping it and getting it put on the layout. As you watch, you may think of some weathering techniques that you like to use for modern concrete structures. If so, tell me about them in the comments section down below. Now, let's get over to the workbench and we'll get started painting and weathering this project. In the previous video, I had assembled all of my new bridge with the exception of installing the support piers onto the overpass. I left the support piers off in order to ease the painting process for this bridge. Before painting and weathering, I consulted some prototype photos. This is a photograph of the Interstate Loop 820 bridge through Saginaw, just north of Fort Worth, that goes over the main line just north of North Yard. This is the bridge I'm trying to model. Note the absence of any solid concrete wall connecting the pylons at the bottom of the piers of this bridge. The kits that I used to build these bridges had those connecting walls, if you will remember, and many of the bridges in this area have similar connecting walls at the base of the pylons. However, this one does not. Also note the light gray color of the aged concrete and the weathering streaks down the sides of the bridge. The bridge that I had built previously, I had painted with an aged concrete color paint, which is simply the wrong color. It is way too green. So I've decided to repaint it to match the prototype photo and also to match the new bridge. I removed the piers from the previously built bridge, including the box bases, and replaced the pylons completely with new ones because they had partly been painted. I carefully sanded the injection gates off the bottoms of all of the pylons for both bridge as they will now show. I assembled the piers using some solvent cement and a square to make sure that each pylon was straight and true. I mixed my own paint for these bridges as I didn't have a color paint on hand that matched what I really desired. I used one quarter ounce of Model Master's Flat White and began mixing in Model Master's Flat Black one drop at a time until I reached the desired shade. I ended up with ten drops of black paint and one quarter ounce of white for this project. I airbrushed the model using several light coats until the white styrene shoulders blended in with the kit pieces, and then I left it to dry. I used a square and a fine dental pick to scribe the expansion joints that were on the kit's deck onto the styrene shoulders. I also used this fine dental pick to scribe some cracks in the pavement. To accent the expansion joints and the cracks, I used a dark wash. In this case, I used AK Interactive's panel liner for gray and blue camo. This is an enamel wash, and I used a pin wash technique. If you're interested in trying this product, or any of the paint and weathering products that I use in this video, I'll provide links to them in the Amazon Picks of the Week in the description down below. Using an 18-aught pointed tip brush, I loaded the brush with the wash and just touched spots of the score lines and allowed capillary action to pull the thin wash into the cracks. Thank you. 
when the paint had partially dried, I used a 10 aught flat brush and some mineral spirits to clean up the unwanted paint from the surface. When you do this cleanup process, dip the brush into the mineral spirits, then blot most of it off on a paper towel. You only need a damp brush to clean up the surface without pulling the paint out of the cracks. Clean your brush and the mineral spirits often so you don't spread the wash in your brush around to areas where you don't want it. Continue this wash and cleanup process until all of the cracks are accented and all of the unwanted paint is removed. When the panel liner was dry, I streaked the center of the lanes using weathering powders. I prefer to use paint pigment powders on plastic models rather than pan pastels or artists pastels. The paint pigments will adhere to the plastic better and will not disappear when a clear coat is applied, as the pan pastels tend to do. I used Monroe Models Medium Gray. Using a small brush, I got some of the powder on the brush and then took most of it off on a paper towel. It's easy to over apply these powders, especially in smaller scales. So use a small amount, apply it lightly to different parts of the lane, and then scrub it in and feather it out with your brush. Moving your brush back and forth down the lane, not across the lane. At this point, I installed the piers onto the bridge. Some of the paint needed to be sanded away from the support beams at the joints to allow the cement to work. I then cemented the piers into place, making sure that they are centered, square, and plumb. I continued the weathering on the sides of the bridge, applying the streaks that are seen in the prototype photo. In this case, I used AK Interactive's Naval Colors Wash for Gray Decks. This is a slightly thicker product than the panel liner, and it won't spread out too much and makes nice fine lines. I used an 18-aught brush to apply the wash, and I applied it in lines that were as close to vertical as I could possibly make them, varying them in length and at random intervals from one another. I added these streaks to the rails on both the inside and the outside of the bridge, as well as to the visible parts of the support beams underneath. As I did with the deck, when the streaks were dry to the touch, I lightened and feathered the streaks using mineral spirits. I streaked the cross supports of the support piers as well, but per the prototype photo, I used a brown wash in this case. I used MIG Ammo's Streaking Grime. I applied wider streaks under each one of the support beams where it crosses this cross member, and when they had dried to the touch, I removed much of the paint and streaked it with the mineral spirits. Doing this at the right angle to be visible to the camera proved to be a challenge in keeping the streaks straight, but off camera it was much easier to keep these streaks looking correct. I allowed some of the streaks to run down onto the pylons below. After the brown streaks had fully dried, I came back and added a few black streaks as well for some variety. When all of the weathering paint had completely dried, I added some general grime and feathered some of the streaks a bit using some more weathering powders. I again used the medium gray as well as a dark earth color from Monroe Models. This added a lot of variety and texture to the model. The prototype has some very basic graffiti on the pylons near the ground, as well as many painted over patches where graffiti has been covered up. I added patches using splotches of a darker gray paint, and then I added some very nondescript graffiti using a super fine Sharpie. The final step was to stripe the bridges. You can buy commercial striping that you can peel and stick or apply as decals to stripe roadways, but I decided to paint my lines on as it allowed me to weather them as I went. I masked the lines using blue painter's tape. I cut the edges of the tape that would guide my paint in order to give me a perfectly straight edge. For this I used a new sharp number 11 blade and a straight edge 
cutting the tape on a hard glass surface. Federal guidelines for road striping call for 5 to 6 inch wide stripes and dashed lines that are 10 feet long with 30 feet in between them. I lined the first piece of masking tape up and made sure that it was straight. I then measured 6 scale inches at one end and started working the second piece of tape down, checking my width periodically. For the dash lines, I masked them in the same way, and then I cut pieces of tape that were 30 scale feet in length to mask between the lines. With the road fully masked, I was ready for paint. Being an interstate divided highway, one solid yellow line goes to the inside or the left side of each bridge, and all the other lines are white. For the yellow lines, I used Tamiya Flat Yellow XF-3. And for the white, I used Model Masters Flat White. I used almost a dry brushing technique to paint these lines, using very little paint on my brush at a time as to keep it from bleeding under the tape and to allow some of the gray to shine through to leave a weathered look. I also tried to keep paint from getting into the cracks so that the black in the cracks would show through. As I finished each line, I removed the masking tape, revealing the finished line. I had a few small spots where a bit of the paint had bled through, but this was easily touched up with a little of my original gray paint. When everything was dried, I set my overpasses in place. With a few cars and trucks in place, it looks great. In another video in the near future, I'll show you how I build the ramp to this overpass and the highway as it extends down over the ramp, as well as the surrounding scenery. Well, as I said in that last segment, I'm looking forward to finishing this project by building that ramp up to this overpass, uh, scratch building the abutments, and getting some scenery in the surrounding area. And I'm going to be doing that project for another video coming up very soon, so watch for that in a future episode of Ron's Trains and Things. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more structure building videos that I know you'll enjoy as well, so be sure and check those out. Also, don't forget to check in the description down below for my Amazon Pick of the Week and the other great links that are provided there. Well, be sure and join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great model railroad segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?